Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, introducing Dr. Scott Harding from the Department of Cardiology at Wellington Hospital. Dr. Harding is one of the world expert CTO operators, and he's going to present case 59 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. Scott, thank you, thank you very much for presenting this case. Thank you, Manos. Um, so I'm going to present a difficult retrograde case. Um, this is a 65-year-old male with uh, class 2 uh, angina, a number of risk factors, dyslipidemia, hypertension, overweight. Uh, coronary angiography shows a near osteal occlusion of the right coronary artery and not a lot of disease in the left. Uh, he's got good renal function and normal uh, full blood count and an echocardiogram shows normal LV function. Uh, if we have a look at the uh, first angiogram, what it shows is that there's a near osteal occlusion of the right coronary artery. Uh, the right coronary artery has an anterior takeoff which makes engagement uh, difficult. This is an AL1 guide. And then we move on to doing bilateral injections, uh, which demonstrates there's a long CTO. Uh, there is a diffuse segment of disease uh, with a narrow channel just after the distal cap extending all the way to the bifurcation. Given the uh, near osseal uh, location and the long segment of disease and diffuse distal disease, uh, this would be a retrograde case uh, in any algorithm. So we need to get started and uh, we start with some anti-grade preparation. Uh, there are a number of reasons why you might want to take, undertake anti-grade uh, preparation uh, first. It reduces the amount of time that you need to have the gear in the retrograde system, uh, potentially reducing ischemia and may also uh, be helpful uh, providing a target for your retrograde system. So the important thing here is that we don't want to use a stiff wire because the course of the vessel is somewhat ambiguous. So we have uh, taken a coarse air and an XTA, which is relatively soft wire, uh, which has made progress down the right coronary artery. You can see that we've uh, used balloon anchoring in the conus branch to provide uh, support. In fact, we made quite good progress uh, with the XTA and the coarse air and you can see that we have uh, made it to the distal cap, but the distal target is actually very small. Uh, not surprisingly, despite our efforts, we couldn't wire the small distal target, so it was time to move retrograde. What you can see from this angiogram is that uh, the dominant collateral is actually uh, an atrial connection from the circumflex to the PLV, but this is uh, very tortuous and uh, not terribly attractive. Uh, there are some septal collaterals, and particularly the most promising appears to be uh, coming off the distal LAD. We made an attempt to wire this, uh, which was unsuccessful, so we've taken a tip injection, which shows a complex arrangement of, in this trifurcation and quite uh, marked angulation of the uh, septal connections. Uh, we tried with a uh, Sion and then a XTR uh, wire to wire these collaterals and made some progress. But as you can see here, a um, rich grade injection demonstrates the wire is not in the uh, distal true lumen. It's very important uh, to perform the uh, rich grade uh, injection to confirm the position of the wire before advancing the microcatheter. If we examine this uh, uh, collateral, uh, you can see really there's a lot of tortuosity and uh, I think it was, it was unlikely that we we're going to make any success. Uh, we tried for about 10 minutes and we could waste a lot of time contrast and radiation uh, with further attempts. So time to move to another septal. Um, so this is the uh, first septal. And you can see on the selective tip injection, uh, just above the tip of the catheter, there is a promising looking branch which was invisible on the non-selective injection. This was initially wired with a Sion wire and then uh, converted to an XCR wire where we make good progress down to the distal vessel. The wire is then extended further into the distal vessel and a rich grade uh, injection is made uh, to confirm the location um, that's not shown. Uh, the wire in fact advanced uh, up to the mid vessel but the problem was is we couldn't advance the coarse air catheter because the size of the microchannel we've tracked is very small. 
Uh, the solution to this problem is usually to uh, downsize to a smaller uh, microcatheter. My favorite microcatheter is a Turnpike LP or Corsair. Unfortunately, in the lab we're working in, they, they, neither of these microcatheters were available. Uh, we used a Mitsuki uh, microcatheter, which is a low profile microcatheter made by Kanika. Um, but again, this would not advance past the same point. So, time for balloon dilation of the channel. Um, this is a 1.25 millimeter over the wire Tizuna balloon, which is used to dilate the channel. Um, I think it's important to use an over the wire balloon because this uh, reduces the chance of channel injury. With the uh, dilation of the channel, um, we could, still could not uh, get a Corsair to pass, but we could get uh, uh, the Mitsuki to pass into the distal vessel, uh, but it would pass no further than this. Um, uh, a stiffer wire was attempted to be uh, passed, but this would not track the channel. An XTA would track the channel, and an attempt was made uh, to uh, perform reverse cart using this wire, uh, but uh, it wasn't stiff enough to uh, progress. Uh, the wire was changed out uh, for uh, uh, a Pilot 200. Uh, uh, this allowed the um, uh, bridge grade microcatheter to be advanced, and it was then uh, changed to a, a Gaia second wire. You can see now we have uh, a situation where the retrograde uh, wire appears to have gone subintimal. It's important to note that the large gap between the antegrade and uh, retrograde wires on the bend. You'll see that uh, a, a guideliner has been advanced through the antegrade catheter um, to uh, take the proximal disease and tortuosity out of play. A balloon has been advanced and a reverse cart has been attempted. So we start with a 3.5mm uh, balloon uh, which is inserted antigradely uh, and then we uh, try to make the connection uh, with a Sion Black. Uh, this fails so the usual uh, solution to this problem is to upsize the balloon. The balloon is upsized to 4.0. It looks promising but again no connection can be made. So when we've had trouble uh, performing uh, the reverse cart and making the connection despite the use of the guideliner, uh, it's time to do uh, IVIS guided reverse cart. An IVIS uh, catheter is uh, advanced uh, antigradely and what we can see is that the antigrade wire is in the true lumen, the retrograde wire is in the uh, subintimal space. Um, there is a small uh, tear in the intima and small connection, but uh, this is very small would be difficult to wire. Uh, what this tells us is that we have two strategies that we can use uh, either a bigger balloon, but the uh, size of the vessel here is 6.0, or uh, we can uh, do a scratch and grow proximally um, to get the anterograde wire into the same subintimal space and that will allow the connection to be made. So we undertook uh, Scratch and Go uh, using a uh, Conquest Pro and a Corsair followed by a knuckle uh, of an XTA uh, to allow the antigrade wire to get into the subintimal space. Ballooning of the subintimal space was uh, then performed over the antigrade wire and this allowed uh, the connection to be made and the guideliner uh, was uh, wired using a Sion Black. Uh, the wire was then externalized in uh, a routine manner, uh, followed by uh, balloon dilatation uh, from the uh, ostium to the distal bifurcation and stenting of the right coronary from the ostium to the distal bifurcation. Uh, we achieved this good final result. Uh, very importantly, um, we need to check the uh, channel before we remove the uh, Retrograde gear, this was checked and showed no damage. So that was my case. Uh, I think that uh, there are a number of learning points from this case. Um, in particular, that uh, reverse cart can uh, uh, have a number of challenges and that we need to have uh, solutions for these problems when they arise. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. That was an amazing case.